Thanks for staying with us. A court in Chennai has sent three people to prison after rifle corps were found in the consignment that was sent from Dubai. The case is being treated as sensitive as a probe gets underway. Customs officials uncovered 10 new rifle scopes with a range of 400 meters, which has sparked a detailed investigation. There are fears that rifles may have also been smuggled in separately. Authorities say the scopes can be fitted to any rifle. Refusing to comment on record, the Commissioner of Customs did say that the issue is sensitive and that various investigative agencies like RAW and Intelligence Bureau have started their probe. The person who had sent the consignment did not disclose to authorities about the rifle scopes. Sources with knowledge of the investigation say the sender apparently did not know about them. <laughs> The three suspects, the person who booked the consignment and two others who were supposed to receive it, were produced before a magistrate in Chennai who's ordered them to be placed in custody. In Chennai with camera person Sagai Raj and reporter Salim, the via for NDTV Hindu. The foundation stone for a second desalination plant in Chennai was laid today at Namilicherry. Documents with NDTV Hindu show that this plant could also hit roadblocks like the first one. The second desalination plant at Nimlicheri is expected to supply fresh water to the entire IT corridor in two years from now. Deputy Chief Minister M.K. Stalin unveiled the start of construction. <laughs> Stalin's words may amount to nothing at all if past precedents are anything to go by. Chennai's first desalination plant at Minjur is still not fully operational. And this new plant on ECR is being given to a company which in Metrowater's own words has failed to meet its expectations. Documents with NDTV Hindu shows in August 2008, the government-run Metrowater banned VATEC Wabog for three years, saying the company installed defective sewage pipes which started leaking from the day they were set up. Metrowater has also blamed the company for building defective manholes which jeopardized sewage systems in Chennai. After tough negotiations between the blacklisted companies and Metrowater, the three-year ban is revoked within two months. The conditions are, Vietech Wabag should honor the sanctity of contracts. But Wabag claims there were no qualitative preconditions in the contract. <clears throat> and some of the press said that we were debarred and all that. It was not a question of that. It was that... They just wanted us to complete that because of the sensitivity of the pipes in the road. Right. It was only a question they were asking whether this company can do this pipeline work. Right. Not for water treatment, not for wastewater, not for desal, not for pumping station. It's only laying the pipes on the road. Yeah. And next board meeting, they realized that it is not our fault mm -hmm. and they took that away from the board that no, this company is not going to be debarred. They just have to repair this work. Clearly, Chennai Metro Water, which is known for its shoddy implementation, seems to have dug its own grave yet again. Another slip-up in providing a basic amenity to residents may be damaging not only to the company, but also to this man, who says he wants to develop Tamil Nadu, apparently without doing a reality check. In Chennai, with Simonish, Saptarshi Bhattacharya, NDTV Hindu. Students of the Asian College of Journalism interacted with Britain's top diplomat in India, Higher Commissioner Sir Richard Stagg. The young trainee journalist did not let any questions go unanswered. This visitor to the Asian College of Journalism had aspiring journalism students on their toes, probably getting a rare shot at firing some of the much-debated questions to Britain's top envoy to India, Sir Richard Stagg. 
I mean, it's rarely that we actually get to speak to somebody in a position like his and to offer like a first-hand uh, official opinion on various issues. Like he spoke about Copenhagen uh, summit. He also spoke about uh, the Taliban issue and about a possible exit strategy. So yeah, it was very informative. Sir Richard talked Taliban, Copenhagen, privacy in the media eye, and the U.S. of A. And as for the students, the journalist within did take home a few pointers. To ask tougher questions, maybe the next time, yeah, I guess. And also, I think even we should have been a little more forthright. I mean, neither of the two parties, I think, were forthright at all. So, yeah. I want to do is get many more British people coming to study. In, in, I mean, at the moment, it's a very come back to tilted plane. It's a very uneven flow. I mean depending on how you count it, 25, 30, 35,000 Indians every year go to the UK, and I think a maximum, maybe 1,000 if you count people coming on short-term attachments and others come back, which isn't particularly logical. With almost £8.5 billion pounds being brought in by overseas students, including Indian students, the British High Commissioner to India was hopeful to get a large number of exchange students from the UK to come to India soon. In Chennai, Evelyn Matthew for NDTV Hindu. Kiran Bedi, former IPS officer who campaigns for welfare policing, addressed students at IIT here in Chennai. Bedi, who is India's first woman IPS officer, shared her ideas about ambition and success. She said the students should give back to the country what it has invested in each student. She also spoke about research, finance and about awareness and action. And the former IPS officer Kiran Bedi spoke to us earlier. She reacted to the story of Will Hume, the Dutch national who was arrested in November last year for child pornography. This is what she had to say. Absolutely. I think we certainly need and certainly these offences should become non-billable. And, and bails, if ever given, should be highly conditional and should be the kind which... Um, uh, should, be uh, should be reporting to the police close by. In fact, there's a debate overseas whether the neighborhood should know whether a particular person who has been a child abuser is living in the neighborhood. In fact, this is a debate which is going on overseas, is whether the neighbor neighbors have a right to know who is living in the neighborhood of this person so that they, are, they can take care of the children. So I think that's, a, that's the whole debate right now overseas. So they're looking at not only the rights of the accused, but the rights of the potential victims. Well, the bail granted to alleged child sexual abuser and child pornographer Will Hume has brought to the fore the question, are we too soft on child abusers? An NDTV Hindu has been campaigning against child abuse through justice for children. If you would like to join us in our fight against child abuse, Write in with your comments to feedback at ndtv-hindu.com. You can also call us or send us an SMS to 994132222. two. We will take all your views to the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. It is high time the authorities know just how strongly we feel about child abusers being let off lightly. Now, well-known faces have come out in support of our campaign. The former supercop Kiran Bedi also voiced her opinion. This is what she had to say. I urge you all to support NDTV Hindu for the campaign for safety towards children, for justice towards children. Join the campaign because we need to be together to protect our children, to ensure our children get their childhood. Our children really get their age of frolic, of fun, of learning and of sense of security. So join NDTV Hindu in the campaign for justice for children. Let's now get you what some of you viewers have been saying. Hannah from Periyar Nagar says, All caregivers are not angels. There should be also a regulatory body to inspect orphanages and special fast track courts to follow such cases. Umapati from Amatu writes in saying, Parents and citizens should also be responsible for the protection of children. A. Sujata from Mother Royal writes in saying this is a serious issue which definitely needs a campaign like this. Hats off to NDTV Hindu. Well, keep those messages coming in. We want to hear more from you. Tell us what you think of this issue. Well, still ahead, how to tweet with your cricketing icons on Twitter. We tell you in just a bit.